Good morning, everyone. Let's get started. Let me share my screen. I hope you guys are able to see my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Yeah, fine, thanks. So uh, do we have anyone who joined newly? Do we have anyone who, who's first class uh, is today? Yeah, uh, this is Raghav. I'm first of this meeting. Okay, hi Raghav. So, are you? Do you have the background of Core Java, or uh, you're from non IT background? Yeah, I have background of Core Java. You just wanted to be the master in the in-depth knowledge yeah. of Core Java, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, fine. So, is the right course for you? So, this we have started uh, around. Uh, couple of days back on November 2nd, we have started the demo classes and today will be the last demo class. Okay. So in the previous class, I just have started with uh, what is Java? What is the advantage of Java? How can we write a sample program? What is the class? Uh, what is the main method? How to do the compilation? How to running the program, etc. These are basic since you said that you already know core Java. It does not take much time to for you to understand. So uh, after the class today, on your register email ID, you are going to get an email from the Ashok KT, so which will have the previous demo classes link. You can click on the link and you can watch the video, okay? Uh, just to get you the speed. So in that, in the previous classes, we just uh, first first day we learned about the course content. Second day we learned about what is why we need to learn Java, okay? Now, what is the advantages of Java? How can I install the Java? And how can I compile the Java program? How can I run the Java program? How can I write a class? How can I write a method? What is a method? What is a class, et cetera? This is, and what is a variable? So this is what we have discussed till yesterday. So why did I discuss this one is, this course is basically for the beginners who does not know Java at all. That means if the people are from, uh, the students are from non-IT background, for them, they can join. If you already know the core Java, then also you can join this course and you can be master in the core Java. At the end of the course, I can 100% say that you will be well versed with the, all the concepts of core Java with a practical approach. Like it is not just a theory approach, it's a practical approach. And uh, we are going to solve some of the OCJP questions in middle and uh, the duration. So I have just mentioned the, here the course content, but since you said that you are already aware of core Java, so no need of uh, this one. Now, for the coming to the fee structure, everything fees around five thousand rupees uh, for this core Java, and uh, we are going to provide you the videos free of cost. So the videos will be provided from the day one that you have enrolled for the course to the six months. So till six months, you can watch the videos any number of times. So this is a for the videos. You don't need to pay any extra. It's a free of cost we are providing. And the timing is every day morning, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And the duration of the course is two months. By January 1st or uh, first week or second week, we are going to complete. Do you have any questions, Raghav, so far? Uh, no, Kati, as of now, I'm good. Okay. So you, as sir. you mentioned Thank that you. you know the core Java, right? So, yeah, in yeah. The, so don't think that we have you have missed the previous classes. So in the previous classes, I just told you told uh, the people about how to write a Java program in the notepad, okay? Because that is where, um, what is a class? How does the Java know that it's a class, etc. You just watch the video and then you will be able to understand. And then uh, if still you have any questions and if you are enrolling, you can ask me the questions in the upcoming classes, okay? And to just to mention you that uh, today is the last demo class. We have been, I've been uh, carrying, carrying out this uh, demo classes from 2nd of November. So it's been almost a week. So we are having the demo classes. Okay, now let's get started. Does anyone, any others have any questions on the so far? Any new joiners or anyone, any questions? No, sir. If you have the questions, please uh, put your question in the chat or you can unmute yourself and speak. Okay. As I mentioned, this is an interactive session, guys. 
okay now let us uh, see uh, ragu the pattern that i teach is uh, first uh, 10 minutes of the day will be the recap of the previous class and then we'll get in, get started with a new topic and uh, if you want to be master one prerequisite is you need to practice at least 30 minutes a day whatever we have discussed if it looks simple to you then you just uh, grasp it in the 10 minutes but if you are learning trying to learn something new topic that uh, whatever i have discussed in the class if you are not aware of it i say that uh, at least 30 minutes of time we need you just need to practice like whatever the program i am going to write in the class you need to write the same thing without looking at this that's where it will boost up your confidence so that is a prerequisite okay. now yesterday we have written the uh, java class now let me ask some questions uh, for non it students so whenever i am writing i want to write a java class what should i do first yeah yeah go ahead uh, unmute yourself and speak guys like or else anyone can answer if i want to write a java program what should i do yeah first we need to uh, use the like public then class name class the keyword then the class name means we need to use the predefined keywords then yeah. uh, we'll use the function because it starts from the main method the that's why we use the main method if you look at here if you hear the file name i need to save with the same class name dot java extension now i have opened this file in the notepad plus plus okay are you guys able to see the public class public static void are coming in a blue color yes sir yes because, sir because so it is able to identify that it is these are the keywords correct these are the special special words that are provided in by java since it is a dot java file in the notepad software whoever whoever has developed this notepad software they were able to identify that the, the keywords they are putting in a blue color correct so in order to write a class we need to have a keyword called public class test public is public is nothing but access modifier class is nothing but say if you are writing a class how does the java know that you are writing a class using a keyword called class yes. now if you are writing a method how does the java know that you are writing a method method name return, uh, type, return type access modifier arguments arguments can be you can pass the arguments or you cannot pass the argument not a problem okay no and yesterday in yesterday in the yesterday class we discussed about the variables can someone tell me what is a variable variables are the place holder sir so when we want to store some value that we can use the variables so yeah so this is what we have seen right in the previous class so variables are nothing but so in in uh, mathematics we denote the uh, what you call numbers decimal number characters alphabets and the normal number but how does the java understand that you are writing some number or character so in order in order to dis, uh, tell java that this is a number or this is a double this, this is a decimal point or this is a character or this is a alphabet the data data types has come into the picture so data types are divided into two types primitive and non primitive what is a primitive we'll come to the non primitive later in the course first primitive so if i want to display a number then these are the different data types are available int long byte short if i want to display the decimal then float and double if i want to display or if i want to use boolean boolean is nothing but true or false if i want to have the characters alphabets okay then char now if i want to say so when i want to perform addition of two numbers i require two numbers if i am asking if someone if i am asking someone to perform the addition of two numbers means 10 plus 20 first of all whatever i am saying that 10 and 20 you are registering in your brain that means you are st storing that values in the brain 10 plus 20 becomes 30 and you are replying the answer but if i am giving you the 10 numbers is it possible is it easy to remember all those 10 numbers no right so that means similarly whenever i am uh, performing some mathematical operation or any operation To, on the computer i need to tell the computer i am passing the number and i need to store it somewhere correct so that's where the variables are coming into picture now see here whenever i am writing like this so this is called variable declaration whenever i am writing like this what is the meaning here 10 is a value where the 10 is stored 
in a variable called a in a a variable i am storing the value 10 now what is this type of uh, variable is it a double decimal point is it a character or is it a number it's a number in order to de denote so by looking at this data type the compiler will understand that this person is writing a integer number value and they are storing that number in the variable called a so variable is nothing but a placeholder this is what we have discussed in the yesterday class and apart from that so we looked at the method right so can someone tell me what is the main method signature yeah public static void uh, is the, like the public is the access specifier then static is the keyword and the body return type okay, anyone else any other answers and there will be the argument okay what kind of an argument uh, string argument string array correct string array yes yeah it should string followed by some bracket open bracket and close bracket that is called array you will get to know that what is an array a little later okay so the uh, the main method signature should be public static void main now can i interchange uh, static and main So here I will remove this main uh, void here and I will keep it here. Will it be compiled? Yes. No, no. I'm asking the question again. Will it be compiled? No. Immediately okay. method will be followed. Before so method. It will throw, yeah. So see what see during the compilation, what happened? Java checked for the syntax error, right? Compiler will check for a syntax error. Whenever you're writing a method, what is the syntax? Method should have a method name before that written type. But here, main is a method name. Before the method name, what is there? Do you have a return type? No. no. But we have a static keyword. Is it the right way of writing a method? No. No. Now, am I violating the guideline provided by Java? Yes. Yes. So hence, I'm getting a compilation error, correct? Yes. yes. So in the interview, they might ask you, what happens if I change this one? So you will get error. Now, what happens if I change the static first and then public next? Will it compile? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Will it run? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Now, if I change this string array, so array name to some, this array name AR, right? I'll let me, this is a variable, correct? So I'll let yes. me put it as Karthik. Will it work? Yes. Yes. Because it's a variable name. You can keep anything. Okay. Now, now if I, instead of uh, string array, if I'm putting int array, will it compile? No, sir. Yes. I'm um, asking compilation. Yes, yes. Uh, compilation. So okay. compilation, it will work because whenever you are writing compilation, what it will check whether syntax the Java error. does not check whether you have yeah. a written a main method or not, right? Whether you have followed the syntax or not. So I have written a class, I have written a method and that method is taking an int argument. Did I do any mistake here? No, no. So there is no compilation issue. But whenever I'm running the program, will it work? No, no, no. Why? Because the signature is... The signature in the so like Java people that define string array. So we are yeah. writing here int. Main method should take the string array, correct? So whatever I'm writing here, it is not considered as a main method because it is not taking the string array, correct? Yes. Yeah. So now we have seen uh, this is the method, right? Now. So now how many types of methods are present in Java? Yesterday I told three types. Three static types. method, instance method, abstract method, right? Yes, sir. Now what is a static method? A uh, method which is defined with the static uh, keyword. modifier. Keyword, yeah. Keyword. Yes. Keyword. Now here, can I say that method name, return type, open bracket, arguments, this entire thing is considered as a method signature, correct? Yes, sir. So in the method signature, if we have a static keyword, in the method signature, if we have a static keyword, then that is called static method. In the method, if I do not have a static keyword, then let me write one more method. Can I write one more method in this class? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many methods can I write? Any number, uh, any number, any of, number of, methods. of methods. Now, can I write a method outside of a class? Yes, no, no. 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 Oh, no, no, no. If you write outside of a class, if, uh, then we are violating the principle of Java object oriented itself. You will get to know that a little later. That is called encapsulation. Okay. Don't worry that uh, we, we haven't started with the OOP principles. We are in the basics only. Now I can write a method. Now let me write a method public void add. 
Okay, done. Now, can I say that the, what kind of a method it is? Instance. Instance method. Instance method. So, in the method signature, if you don't see the instance static keyword, then that is called as an instance method. Don't worry, I am going to explain what is the use of static method, what is the use of instance method, everything. But when when you look at some method signature, you need to identify, right? Some people will say static, some people will say instance. What is the difference? So that is what I'm trying to explain now. Now, next is abstract method. Can someone tell me what is an abstract? It's uh, a method without a body. Yeah, method without body. Can I say that public void test, oh, sorry, M1. Now, can I say, in order to write a body, then only we are opening the open curly bracket and close curly bracket, correct? Yes, yes sir. Now here, in the, for the M1 method, do I have the open curly bracket and close curly bracket? No, no. That means a method can be called as an abstract method provided it does not have the body. So here, now if what is the main method is doing here? I'm writing some print, print statement, some statement. Can someone tell me what M1 method you can do? We yeah, cannot that, guess it, correct? Yes, yes. Who is because implement we do not that, have the uh, body yeah. of the method, right? So a method yes, can be called as an abstract method provided it does not have a body of the method. Okay. Now I'll give you one more simple example. Are you guys from you guys are from the BSc background or BTEC background, right? Yes, yes, yes. In sir. your engineering, in your engineering, the final year or in your degree final year, there will be a project work, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the project work, whenever you start it. What do you do? What do you submit to the your HOD? Abstract. Uh, abstract. Abstract. What does it mean? Uh, so overview of project. Overview, yeah. Uh, so that means, sir, sir, I have this idea. This is my idea. You will tell that only, correct? Will you tell what, how you are doing, how you are implementing, what are the uh, equipment you are using and all that, will you mention in the abstract? No, no, sir. That means, can I say that you are going to give, you are not revealing the details, but you are sharing the idea, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The same thing holds here also. Abstract methods are something. So are you revealing the logic of the method? Does anyone know what M1 can do? No, no. But can I look at the signature and, and understand that M1 method is not returning anything? Yes, sir. Right? So by looking at the method signature, can I say that, see, this um, method name is M1 and it is not returning anything and it is a public public method. Anyone can access it. So this information I'll know. Similarly, whenever you go to your project, you will submit it. See, if you want to do some artificial intelligence project, you will say that I am trying to work on the artificial intelligence project and this is what uh, my idea. So that means you are, you, you are telling that AI you are using and then you are, you, this is your idea. Similarly, I'm telling here, this is my method name M1 and this is not returning anything. That's it. So that means I am providing abstract nature. Am I revealing the implementation details? Not. So whenever you get that kind of a implementation, see, uh, in your project, two teams, two multiple people can do the same similar project also. Correct? The way of implementation would see whenever you're working on AI, artificial intelligence, technology is AI. But different solutions you can provide with the AI, right? Multiple yes. teams can use the AI technology, but they can provide different technologies. That's the same thing holds here also for an abstract method. Abstract method is something which does not have the body. That means no one can tell what is the details of it. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Does, does anyone have any questions so far? No, sir. Okay. No. Now let us understand what is a return. Now, so in the method, just now whenever I'm telling you the method, so I told that method will have a return type. See, access modifier, we will learn later. We know what is the method name. We know what is the method argument, but we do not know what is a return type. I just told you that you write void, but what? let us understand what is a return type. Now, so now here, if I am performing addition of two numbers, okay? I want to write a method. See here, uh, now assume that some interviewer asked me, write a program to calculate addition of two numbers using a method and return the value. That is the question asked, okay? Now, for example, if I'm asking uh, someone of you, what is the value of 10 plus 20? What do you return? 30. 30, that means you are replying to my question, correct? 
yes so sir. if i yes. want to do that in the programming language can i say that first i will use public okay leave about the return type leave about the return type and then what is the method name add okay now whenever i how many numbers that the interviewer is asking me to add two, two. numbers that means can i say that this add method should take two arguments yes sir yes for example if i am asking you to add 10 numbers then how many met argument that add method should take 10, 10 arguments okay now i am saying that the numbers so numbers in order to denote the numbers what data type i should use int 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 long short byte anything okay you does not know the difference behavior difference what is the difference between all these data types i'll come to that later but any of the thing i can use correct for time being i'm using int now can i say that int it's a data type but after the data type what should i do i have to have a variable why do i have the need a variable to store the value correct int i comma int j okay done i have created a method now how can i perform the addition can i say that i plus j yes sir now i plus j will give you what addition of two numbers but you need a placeholder to store this value also correct yes yes now what is a placeholder i am putting one more variable generally where do you store the value in a variable correct so int is a variable now i created but how does the computer know that what is a c is it a int is it a double no i have to mention the data type also correct done now interviewer is asking me return the value from this method now can i say that this method is calculating add method is taking two arguments and it is calculating addition of two numbers and then where that addition is stored in c in c so can i say that i have to return the uh, c value yes yes okay return c okay so this is a logic by looking at this program you will understand but how how others will understand by looking at the method signature what this method is returning by looking at here correct yes. now now here what are the things i can write now can i now i can write c correct now if i am writing c what is the c int type int type but what is what is that holding i plus j the value I plus of i plus means j. addition of two numbers okay yes but if i am writing c can uh, for example this is my method signature public c add int i comma j do you guys understand what is a c value if you no. do not know what is the implementation of this method do you know what is a c is it a integer is it a double is it a long do you know no that means writing the c is not a right value correct right okay now what this method is returning so here whenever you are returning c what you are returning if i am taking if i am calling the passing the values as 10 comma 20 what is the result 30 okay where that result is stored c c what is the type of c integer that means this method is returning what is it returning a integer or double integer now can i say that i have to so can i say that instead of mentioning the variable name i have to mention the data type yes sir yes so that means whenever you are uh, uh, when that means what is the data return type return type is something what this method is returning correct so by looking at the signature now assume that this is a implementation i have mentioned but you do not know this one okay now if you do not know this one by looking at the signature by looking at the signature what you can understand we can understand that uh, the, the method should return some integer value yeah that means this add is a method name which is taking two arguments those arguments are also type of int and it is returning a some int value correct yes sir now if i want to perform now i don't want to perform integer uh, addition i want to perform some division whenever i do division there may be a possibility of getting a double value correct yes, yes sir. sir now in order to store the double c can i say that change it to double yes yes sir and then here i need to change it to double correct double. yes okay now instead of uh, this addition of two numbers i am asking you write a program uh, to calculate the salary of a person write a program to return the salary of a person by making the calculation so in order to write so i am writing a method name as salary calculation 
okay done how can you create how can you sal calculate the salary for example i am working in an organization how can i get a salary yeah just like uh, that they will give you the salary or do they do no, any calculation they will do all the calculations so you will have the first of all you will have the basic salary correct yes basic salary multiplied by how many number of days you worked correct yes number yes. of working days okay now apart from that da ta will be there but for software employees do we have a ta no no we don't have a drot 11 okay no that will be there for the government employees now so basic salary so that means whenever you join any organization you will get a offer letter in the offer letter they will mention you the basic salary right yes sir yes others everyone understand uh, agree with me have you guys seen the basic salary in your salary slip yes or no yes okay yes. now in order to do the salary calculation what is my logic basic salary multiplied by number of working days this is my formula correct okay now this method should take what arguments can i say that it should take basic salary it should take number of working days so in order to denote number of working days what variable what type of data data type i can use the primitive yeah primitive int, out int. of the in, in the primitive int. what uh, int long double which one double. number of working int. days it is a number or decimal int. Int. int it's a number so i will use int so number of working days that's a variable name done that's the second argument what is the first argument basic salary so is the basic salary a double or number or character double double, double. so that means it's a decimal value decimal value how can i denote double correct double bs yes, means basic salary done now here can i write inside this method so open bracket close bracket why am i using this open bracket and close bracket to write the implementation correct to write the logic of this method correct yes sir yes sir now basic salary multiplied by number of working days whatever the variables here okay done now for example if i am my basic salary is 10500 50 pais and i have worked for 30 days now can i say that this multiplication will give me some answer right double so where should i store that i i have to create a variable correct yes sir yes now that variable name i am putting salary can i put any variable variable name can be anything or not yes sir so i kept salary now but what this kind of a data type Double. should be double. double okay now what my interviewer is asking write a program write a method to calculate the salary yes i have written now and he is asking me to return salary so can i say that return in order to return the data value from a method we use a keyword called return return is also a keyword hence you can see the blue color return salary now here by looking at this method do you know what method is what it is returning do you see any data type written type here no no that means i do not know what it is returning but so what am i returning here what kind of data i am returning double double, double. can i say can i put it here double yes sir yes so this is nothing but a data a return type return type can be anything you can write the return type int long double float char anything any data type so whatever the data type that we have in java we can write the data type over here we can use the wrapper class also as a return type i'll come to that later okay this is a method return type does anyone has any questions no no right hello sir yeah uh, yeah prathamesh here yeah prathamesh uh, sir we can take uh, float also for basic salary so yes you can you can i'll i'll tell you what is the difference between a int long float double and all in maybe okay. next 5 minutes okay so okay yes but uh, whatever we have discussed what is a return type in a method yeah. any questions uh, no sir okay now return type should be where should i write a return type immediately before the method name mm -hmm. correct between yes, the return type and method name you cannot allow anything else that's a guideline okay now now here let me write here so i want to write so let me write m1 method let me write one more method called public uh, 
salary calculation salary calculation okay it is taking two arguments what are those two arguments double bs is nothing but basic salary look at here double is also shown in blue color that means what it is all the data types are also keywords in the number of working days okay now yeah variable name method name should start with a small letter get okay, done now what is the calculation bs multiplied by number of working days this variable name copy it and put it here done where am i storing here double salary i put sal now i want to return see now if i compile this program will i get any compilation error now yes no sir Yes. Uh, we'll get a compilation error. Do I have a return, return type here? No. no. I have declared the method, but it does not have a return type. It's a, it looks simple, but you are you have given the wrong answer, right? Yes. Yes. Ajit, hope you understood. Now here, this I haven't I haven't written the return type. Can you write a method without a return type? Ah uh, yes, yes. Sir. Here, here if we can write. If you don't want to return, if you don't yes. want to return anything, then you have to put void key. Void, yes, sir. Yes, right. Okay. Now yeah. here I am returning this double. Now double I will put. But now will there be any compilation error? No. Yes. Okay. Then, yes. The reason yeah. see here what by looking at this method signature, what anyone can understand? The method should return uh, double value. Yeah, the method should return double value. Correct. But inside the method, inside the open bracket and close bracket, did I write a return statement? No. no. That means whenever you are having a any return type other than void that means you need to have a return type return keyword also correct yes sir. return yes sal okay now this is a method now i have now did i call the, did i create this method no no see i have written this method now so will it be will it be executed immediately when i run the program will the salary calculation method will be called or not should not call since it is uh, not called. See, not here called, it is as simple as that. Whenever we took birth, whenever we took birth, do we know our what what people will call? Do we know? Do we have any name? No. No. That means on on the twenty first day, we'll be given with some name. Correct. That is called naming ceremony. On the naming ceremony, we'll give be will be given with some name. With that name only, everyone will call. Then only you will look at. For example, if someone calls me my back or front or somewhere, Karthik, then immediately I will respond to them. Correct? Because yes. someone is calling my name, so I am responding it to them. Correct? Yes, sir. Here, let just understand that. See, whenever if I am saying that Ajit, or if I say um, uh, if I take some name or Sunil or Samir Amit, so immediately if I if I say guys, are you understanding? No one will respond. But if I take the name Ajit, do you respond? Do you understand? Then can I say that Ajit will respond? Yes, sir. That means unless until I call that uh, your name, you are not responding. Correct? You know, yes. you your name is there already. You are there in the class. Your name is there. Everything is there. You are present in the class. But unless until I take out your name, you are not responding. Correct? Yes. Now similarly. Here, can I say that I have written a salary calculation logic, salary calculation method? I have written. It has a logic, but am I calling this from from somewhere? No. That means method has to be called, correct? Yes, if, sir. See, I have written a method. How can I make use of this one? From somewhere, I have to call, correct? See, if Ajit is in the class, how can I get the attendance? I have to take out the name called Ajit so that he will say, if he is present, he will say present. If he is not, then he will be silent. Now. Similarly, I have written a method here. Now, can I say that this method has to be called some from somewhere? Then only the logic will work. Yes, sir. Okay. So now let us see how can we call this method. Okay. Now let's see. Let me keep make this as a static method. Okay. Now, if it is a static method, how can I call this method? You can copy this method name from the main method. Copy the method name salary calculation. Okay. Followed by what it is taking. Okay. One double argument, one int argument. Double means can I pass my value? So yes. here basic salary. One way I can do, I will create a double variable, double d equal to some my salary something. 
this is my salary 25 okay done int number of working days number of working days you can keep anything equal to 20, 30 day 31 days okay done now i have the variables for the number of working days and then be a basic salary okay i am putting uh, some variable called d now can i say that my basic salary is present in a variable called d my number of working days is present in a variable called this one can i say that this variable i have to pass it here d comma yes. number of working yes now from here so can i say that i am calling this method or not by calling the method by using the method name am i calling the method yes sir others hope you do you, do you understand yes sir yeah now whenever i am calling the method what this method is returning double that means this result of this method after execution of this method see whenever i call this it will go here now what is uh, what what i am what is the value of d some number where the d will be stored here in the B, basic salary bs it will be stored 34534.23 in number of working days it will store 31 now it is performing the 31 multiplied by basic salary and it is calculating the salary and it is returning that means this method is returning some double value that means here after completion of this logic after completion of this line number I, am i getting the salary variable in a double value yes sir now i need to have see this is this method is returning some value so i need something to store that value correct we need to give some variable yeah so i'll create some variable called final salary equal to but what is that variable double so double. let me use double so this is how you we can call a method correct this is how we can call a method yes, so sir. we created a method and then we call the method okay so if it is a static method directly we can call from a static method if it is an instance method we need to create an object i'll i'll come to that uh, what is an object etc little later yes before every variable uh, for example first you need, whenever you are creating a variable you need to uh, whenever you create any variable first you need to provide the data type so that the compiler will understand that you are providing so here for example, I want to calculate the final salary. What I will do? I will create a final variable already here. I have defined it. By default, what is the whenever you create a decimal value, what is what it will hold the value? 0, 0.0, correct? Yeah, the default value it will hold, sir. Yeah. So here I so in line number five, what I did, I created a double variable, final salary. Now I want to use this variable here. Okay. Now, here in line number seven again, do I need to mention double uh, again? No, not required. Not required because I have mentioned it already. So these are the different ways of writing it. Okay. So this is about how we have a method and how to call the method. Now, that means uh, just like that, if you cry, write a method in a class, will it call? No, we need so to in, call in, from I have a, Yeah, I have a class. Inside that 100 methods are there but none of the method I called in a main method. What will be the output? No, nothing. Nothing, it will not display anything, correct? It will run the program. Main method will execute, that's it. But uh, does the memory occupy it for the rest of the methods? No. No, nothing, because unless until you call it, you don't respond, correct? See, whenever someone I say that, uh, are you understanding? No, you will don't respond. But if I pick out the name, then you are responding. It is as simple as that. Unless whenever you create a method, unless until you call the method name it the method will not be called now we know variable we know method we know how to write a class and all okay now there is one more concept called as object okay what is an object now i in the earlier classes i have given you one uh, diff, one example of object can someone tell me what is an object yeah suppose uh, you will take uh, like animal and inside that animal, we have cat and those things. So uh, animal is the generic one and cat uh, comes on that one. So here uh, uh, we can say cat is an object. An so, animal is a class. Yes. Yeah. Kate. Earlier I have taken an example called animal. So when I take the animal as a class, it's a generic one. You do not know what animal it is. So it has some characteristics and it has some methods. Method is nothing but actions. Every animal can perform action. But if I say dog is an animal, then what does it mean? Dog can perform the characteristics of a class. 
dog can perform the actions of a class that means in this scenario in this example dog is called as a object so for each and every class i can create a object so object is something which exists and which will provide uh, which will provide the uh, reality correct so whenever you have an animal it is not a reality right so it is a just generic so object is something which is going to exhibit the characteristics of a class okay now now in 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 java i want to create a object okay so here animal is present and dog is there so dog is one kind of animal cat is one kind of animal cow is one kind of animal that's fine that is the english i am telling but now in java how can i create a object how does java or how does the compiler or how does the jvm know that uh, you are creating a object of a class can anyone tell me how to create an object of a class by using new keyword yeah by using new keyword we can create now let us see let me tell you guys what is the syntax to create an object okay now in order to create an object we have to follow some syntax that is one of the guidelines so whenever you are creating a class uh, whenever you want to create an object see class name let me write class name reference variable equal to new class name so this is an open bracket close bracket so similar so i i told you guys about how to create a class how to create a method similarly in order to create a object this is the syntax you need to follow okay class name now here in this example what is a class name test test, test. now test okay reference variable can be anything you can write anything okay i am writing t equal to what is a new it's a new is a keyword so how does the java will know that you are creating object by key, by looking at the keyword called new how does the java know that you are writing a class by looking at the class keyword called class similarly how does the java know that you are creating a object by looking at the keyword called new okay new followed by what is the class name test now and then open bracket close bracket now so this is a object creation that means now can i say that you have created a object for test class yes sir yes sir what is the object name here t t this t is called as a reference variable or this t is also called as a object okay now can i create can i create one more object yes okay let me create if i so now if i compare the same, if i compile it will it work no why we get the same object name yeah so because see here uh, let us take one more example whenever you are in the organization uh, uh, is can can a can a two person have can two employees have the same name yes sir possible but can the two the employees can have the same employee id no sir. no not possible same thing here now i am creating for a test class i am creating two objects can the two objects he will have the same name not required you see if it is same then you are violating the principle of the if employee two employees employee id is same what is the mistake why it is not allowed tell me See, that employee id is a unique way of identification correct see for example you have a aadhar card can someone else have your same aadhar card number no no sir because that is identification correct to tell you that this is a you they are giving you some unique number similarly uh, here i am telling you i am so whenever you create an object uh, you can create n number of objects for a class now what is the thing see whenever you are creating multiple objects for a single class what you need to do you need to create a the unique object name correct so here unique variable reference variable now let me put here see here already t is there here again you will say t duplicate reference variable duplicate object now let me put t1 now it will work yes or no yes sir okay now here now let me create one uh, some variables string s okay s equal to so in order to denote uh, what you call some alphabets together we use a data type called string i'll come to the string later but just time being just be with me for this one int employee id equal to 1 2 3 4 5 okay now done now let us see what is the difference between see we have in order to denote a number we have a int data type long data type etc in order to denote a num uh, decimal we have float and double 
Now let us see what is the difference between those data types. It depends on that range. Look at here. These are the primitive data types. These are the wrapper class. Each primitive will have a wrapper class. I'll tell you why this is created because to follow the one of the object oriented principle. Okay. Now. Yeah. So here, look at, look at this box. So here, if you look at here, data types are two types, primitive, non-primitive. Under primitive, we have a numeric. In the numeric, we have an integer like number and floating point is nothing more double and float. Now here, look at here. So what is the difference between an int and short? So if you see that is a range. So now if you create a data type variable with the int variable, then what it can hold? See int variable will is holding the value number. Can a number be negative in mathematics? Can I have a negative number in mathematics? Yes, yes. sir. Now, when I say number, it can be one, it can be 10, it can be one crore, 100 crore, 1000 crores, any number, correct? Yes. But whenever you're storing it in the, in the computer, it, it requires, you see, if you're, uh, can I say that here, whenever you are converting 10 into bits, zeros and ones, will it have the same uh, memory for one crore? Will it have the same memory or for, for 10 number, will it have the same memory or different memory? Different memory, different sir. Memory. That means, so when, based on the value, you have to manage the memory, correct? If you if you want to store it 10, you need a less memory. If you want to store uh, 100 crores, you need a different mem higher memory, correct? So depends on the uh, memory size or depends on the range, these data types are categorized. So for example, if you are taking an int variable, int variable can hold the data up to, look at here, Minus two one four seven four eight three six four eight. It's a number. It, it's around uh, maybe two hundred crores or something. Okay. If you look at the byte, byte is also a used to represent a number. But what is the byte variable can hold? Minus one twenty eight to plus one twenty seven. Now let me go to the program. Now I want to create a byte variable. Byte b equal to. Let me give two thirty four. Will it work? No. So, Why? Will I get a compilation error or will I get a runtime error? Runtime error. Are you sure? Compile time error. See, I should get a compile time error only. So now you need to know whether am I violating the uh, uh, guidelines of Java or not. So whenever I write uh, this one, byte B, what is the byte can of... hold the value? Minus 128 to plus 127. But what is the value that you are giving? 234. So uh, are you violating the principle directly? Yes, sir. Yes. So let's see whether, uh, let's go to here and see. CMD. How can I compile the Java program? Java C for a class number. Sorry, it is in different location. The compulsory look at here. Am I getting an error here? Incompatible types. Byte B equal to 234. Types possibly lossy conversion from an int to byte. Correct? See, when see here the byte variable, whenever you're creating a byte, what is the value that it can maximum hold? Minus 128 to 127. But here, what you are giving? 234. Is it with the out of the range of byte? Yes. 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 So sir. That's where you are violating the principle of Java. Hence, you are getting a compilation error, right? 
So this is very important question because whenever the program is given to you, there will be option some output and then runtime error, compile time error, correct? Now maximum you guys will keep it as a runtime error, but is it a runtime error or compile time error? Compile time error. Yes. Now in order to solve this compile time error, what data type I should use? Short. Anything error. else? Like short. see here, I can go for a short, correct? Yeah. Short is minus three to five seven uh, to three to seven. I can use short, I can use int, I can use long, any of the thing, correct? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. yes. Now let's change it to short. Okay. Now let me comment this method. Okay. Now let me execute. See? The compilation is success. Now let me change. Now short variable. Now let me add some value here. Now, now what happens if I compile the program? Error. Compile time error. Because see, integer number too large. See, for short, whatever the number you are giving, it is very large. You cannot, for the short variable cannot hold that value, correct? You need to use int, correct? Now, what is the, so what is the difference between the data types like int, short, long? Is range. Yeah. So it is, it is beyond the int range also. Let me take it as long. Why am I getting? Let me save it. Yeah, it's done. Okay. It is beyond that range also. Okay. Fine. Now, that means see the difference between a different data types is the range. Similarly, for float, what is that? So now whenever you are having a decimal point, can I say that you have the decimal, you can have the decimal point after decimal, you can have two decimal, three decimal, four decimals, correct? 100 point, 0, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. See, after the decimal, see in the decimal point, we have the mantis and exponent, correct? Yes, yes, sir. Now, after decimal, how many till, see, see whenever you do 30 pi, what is the pi value? 3.14. 3.14. Is it 3.14 or still, still uh, go on? Still go on. Still go on. You have, but in, in our mathematics, we have reduced it to 1.4. But if I want to print it, can I say that it will be having a longer value? Yes. yes so if I use, see, now the difference between a float value is, uh, the float is depends on the, uh, see, up to seven decimal points. Double will give you up to 16 decimal points. That means, Whenever you want to store that pi value, for example, I want 16 de more than seven decimal point, then I should go for a double. Mm -hmm. If I want only seven decimal point or two decimal point, then I can go for float, correct? So if it is a number, it depends on the range. If it's a, uh, what you call decimal point, then it depends on the how many number of decimal points you want, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. So this is a difference between a, what is the different data types are available in Java? Why we have the differentiation? So why why we can have only one data type at all? See here, I don't need to byte, char, short, int. I can have directly long. See whatever byte is storing, can the long will store or not? Yes. yes sir. See byte be one twenty five. Can I say long l equal to one twenty five? Yes, because that one twenty five comes under this range, correct? Yes. Okay, but the problem is. See here, byte will occupy how many? See here, if you look at here, what is the size here in this box? You can see one size. Byte will occupy eight bits of memory. So in computer, computer will occupy the memory in terms of bits and bytes only, correct? If you look yes. at your mobile, whenever you're buying the mobile, will you see the 64 GB, 50, uh, 256 GB or 128 GB? What does it mean? The capacity it can hold. That means it is storing inside internally in times of bits, kilobytes, gigabytes, and all. Correct? Yes. Now the thing what see here, if you do not, if I do not have this byte, char, short, int directly, I will have only long. Then even to store just a normal value 125. Also, I am how much memory I am using? 64 bits. So am I saying can I say that I am wasting the memory? Yes, sir. So that's the reason Java creators has created multiple data types. Depends on the value to to optimal usage of memory 
so in in your in the regular application nowadays uh, the storage is becoming a problem correct everyone is accessing everything in the over the internet the problem is of storage only right yes so that's where this different data types comes into picture hope everyone understood this yeah yes now in whenever you see a program which says byte b equal to some say int i equal to some long value can i say that it's a compilation error yes sir yes sir yeah so like have you guys uh, so this is what even for the experienced guys this is that that is a question maybe wrongly answered correct yes, yes. who already know the java so that is how we are going to learn first we'll start with start with the basics and then when we are studying we'll study in depth details also okay yes sir so that's all for today guys and today will be the last demo class and from tomorrow onwards whoever is uh, have completed the enrollment they are going to get a email and the message from the ashok it with a new zoom link and telegram group so please join the telegram group and then uh, from tomorrow onwards please join the class with a new uh, zoom link for the enrolled candidates and if you are interested and if you have not done payment i request you to please do the payment and uh, raghav uh, you are going to get a email in that email you will have the details on where to do the payment uh, like google pay number phone pay number or account details and after doing the payment take a screenshot and send it to one specific email id called ashok it payment that is also mentioned in the email just go with go through, go with the inter- instructions provided in the email you will get to know sure sir yeah any questions anyone others actually i want to uh, like see what is the post content i have not seen today is my first session uh, okay so what you can do is uh, as a course content means whatever is in the uh, java like core java i am going to explain but let me give you do you aware of core java already yes sir yes. yeah the course content would be like this i have written high level guys so when i say that see here you don't see the variable but variable is something if i have to explain object oriented principles i have to explain what is the method i have to explain type of methods and all that will come internally correct so i have written see if i am writing like that the course content itself becomes two pages but see whenever you say someone uh, if someone can ask you that whether you had a dinner or lunch but they don't ask you whether you have rice whether you have chapati whether you have a curry and all right the same thing happens here i have written all the concepts here op principles constructors final class exception handling string threads multi threading i am going to write a multi threading program which you cannot uh, write in your projects i mean no one has uh, everyone knows that what is a thread but how to create a thread how to visualize a thread how to write a multiple thread multi thread programming one real time applic- one real time example we are going to write and then think uh, concurrency a serialization wrapper classes auto boxing unboxing java memory management class loader variable arguments file io collection framework uh, and then internals of collection framework cloning garbage collection like uh, java 8 or java 8 9 11 will be a separate batch oh so there is a batch that i do take on java 8 9 11 together all java 8 9 11 features i am going to explain but in this course at the end uh, someone also asked the question earlier uh, they want some overview on the stream <coughs> i can explain overview of java 8 also not a problem at the end uh, uh, that batch when uh, you have to conduct uh, like uh, there is a schedule for that yeah i it is not yet announced i uh, you'll get to know maybe i am planning to have the weekend batch for that java 8 9 11 oh th- uh, 3 to 4 weekend it's a weekend batch i am planning but that details will be shared soon soon uh, sure sir yeah. thank you any questions do you think anything is missed uh java this is core java is fine uh, everything is uh, yeah. looks cool. but i haven't written here some people will say that sir variable you haven't written some methods you haven't written so that is not that is not the right way of uh, taking yeah. the course content correct correct, correct. exactly 
uh, that is like just theoretical theoretical wise uh, i see there is no when i have to use. explain op principle these are all the prerequisites right mm. yeah. so if no question that's all for today guys uh, way of teaching is uh, what i observed is way of teaching is very good uh, instead Thank of you. like uh, uh, like theory wise you don't explain anything but uh, you have nicely teached so that is what i i do like uh, not only for the demo classes throughout the entire course i will say not only this one i do teach data structures i do teach design patterns i do teach java 8 9 11 features and then core java advanced java so all this one i do teach with a practical approach because i faced in my initial career i faced the same problem everyone says that theory honestly i have not attended any of the Asho, um, amir paid batches I even like uh, when I start, I do not know what is Amir Pet also when I was in engineering because I am from the electronics background. So I have more passion towards electronics, but how somehow I have to do the computer job. So that's where I started my learning. So at that time, so I was having difficulty in understanding uh, by looking at the videos and all. So then uh, from my uh, seniors, like in our, in our organization, we have the team leads and all, right? So from them, I understood that learning the java is not like reading somewhere some textbook or reading some blogs or something looking at the source code and understanding the source code and de debugging the more you debug the more you know so that's why i teach uh, completely practically like even i say theory theory also but the theory i will explain through the practical program throughout the course it will be like this i can yes. i can that is what i can 100 percent guarantee that See, there may be a, someone might say that see, since are, these are the demo classes, you have, uh, that means I have practiced well to say that practical session, but once you have paid, I may switch back to the theory. No, it is not like that. I do not know how to explain the theory. I know only the practical way. Even the, the, there, 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 are my, there are students my, from my previous batch, they can also say that whether what is, what is the way I teach. Anyone like? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I attended the Java 8, 9, and 11, and also data structure. The SARS teaching is very good and in practical way. So, once uh, whatever SAR is saying, like from day one, uh, day one onwards, for, until the like end of the batch, he will be explaining a little bit uh, theory, then he will be jumping to the practical. So, you will have the uh, knowledge on the practical exposure as well. Also. So, means you will be the master in all the things. And whenever you will ask questions, uh, sir will explain you. Like he will not agitate on that one. So I, what I observed that. So Once and I do. Are, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Once you are the part of uh, the that is, sir, you are continuously attending his session. Yes. So because I like Karthik sir's best, so I completed Java eight, nine, and eleven, and also data structure. So the SARS course Java started, so I joined this also. Actually, we are we have to move from core Java to Java, but the scene is reverse here. Yeah, because, because see, of, the, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. See, whenever the, at that time I don't have time, so the, the core Java started late. That's what means from core Java to you will go that one, so so that you will have the much knowledge on that one. So I already know the thing, so I want to like mastery on this one. That's why I like SARS batch. So you can go go with this core Java, then uh, you want Java 8, 9, and 11, and also you go to the data structure page. So first, uh, my suggestion is go with this core Java, so you will be more uh, uh, concept on core Java, then you move the Java 8, 9, and the data structure. Suppose you want to carry in Java. As of now, our, uh, Karthik, as of now, our company will use like uh, Java 15. Okay. So that's what uh, I'm expecting, like uh, the new versions of. Uh... Yeah, yeah. See, if you want to learn Java 15, directly, if you learn Java 15, you cannot understand because what see, the revolutionary started in the Java is from 8. The main Correct. thing is stream. If you hmm. understand, see, Java 8 has a stream, Java 15 also has a stream. But if you directly jump into the Java 15, you cannot understand streams. Because they don't talk about streams because it's already there in the eight. So 
you need to learn by version by version 8 9 10 you cannot you can ignore 10 is a smaller one 9 8 9 11 and then 15 now 17 and now it's coming 19 uh after java 8 17 is the major release right karthik no 11 11 11, is there. 11. yeah where things also can yes so that is what i have uh, started with explaining java 8 9 11 see your organization using 15 maybe they started they are starting the project from the scratch i guess okay but there are organizations which are using java from so long so they don't just like that shift from older 18 to 15 or 17 directly one by one they'll move because of their uh, nature in the application right there may be a risk analysis also will be there yeah most so that, of the projects only uh, they have used like java 11 yes uh, so be- but, why java 11 also because java 8 uh, earlier java 8 whenever it is introduced java 8 has become a paid version so java 8 has stopped the support from 2019 so from 2019 the oracle is providing the support only for 11 so that's where you nowadays you are seeing all the applications are getting migrated from java 8 to 11 earlier it is used to java lesser 7 8 version to java 8 but now all the java 8 is getting moved to the java 11 so you in the interview also you will be expected maybe next 6 months everyone can see the questions on 8 9 and 11 together maybe after 2 3 years they might ask you 15 correct <laughs> Yeah, that's what we have downloaded only open jdk 11 has yeah. for developer perspective yes if for individual user it is free for uh, organization perspective it is a paid version from java 8 onwards it's a paid version okay so and uh, not only this one i do explain the interview questions as well because i do take the question interviews from my for my organization right i am a interviewer as well so i can tell you what what can be the questions what can be the answers so that question answers uh, will be all, will also be discussed at the end of the course okay sure. so if no question that's all for today guys i don't take much time of yours so and if you are interested please do enroll it and then yeah amit uh, yeah <laughs> hello gudi yeah sorry yes, so for 8 9 and 11 what is the fees it's around 4000 i think okay and duration is one month one month to one month 10 days that is weekend only right so we so weekend would be so weekend see i used to teach that on a everyday basis like morning but now uh, my mornings are occupied so i may do the teaching of that 8 9 11 over the weekend uh, that would be around four weekends we can cover like four sundays four saturdays maybe within one and of month four weekends okay saturday would be a two hours class sunday would be two hours class uh can you please start as soon as possible that <laughs> yeah uh, if so it is multiple see, if there are so many people i can start for one person i cannot do so let me i'll, I'll let me think about it and i'll let you know if there is anything you can look at the poster from the ashok it sure sure yeah thank you So if no Thank questions you. that's all for today guys thank you all thanks for joining have a nice